2TC is an achievement on Balloons Tower Defense 6 where you need to complete an entire chimps game with just two towers. Today we're going to be doing this with the Ark of Mage and the Balloon Cineration. I have a favorite on the channel, the Balloon Cineration. That's just a matter of where to put our magic monkey over here so that we will be able to use it in order to be able to get to the point where we can actually afford the, uh, the mortar over here. But we do need to give it some upgrades first beforehand, and uh, yeah. Since we're doing this on moon landing, it's not going to be an easy feat. How about putting you on strong so that then you... Okay, I might put it too far away from the crater to begin with. It's a better spot for later on, but not for early on when we're facing against all this. But, managed to do it good. Fireball next. So if my voice sounds a bit croaky today, I've developed a bit of a cold throughout the, uh, the weekend. And I'm suffering from red balloons escaping as well. Hmm, need the fireball upgrade, but it keeps coming a little too late when I really need the upgrade to come in. Good, good, good. Got fireball up and active. Good. It was unleashed just when I really needed it. So next up actually is going to be Arcane Blast. Then we're going to give a mortar just because her projectile we're firing out we're not doing enough damage is it weird for me to try and do this on moon landing yes do you think it's good that i'm trying to do this on a different map than the usual suspects yes let's just get all this done and act still good 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 done and active done and adam gosh around i feared so many green balloons so many opportunities for a balloon to slip on by. Yeah, I don't think this round is possible where we put our wizard monkey here, honestly. I just think we're not covering enough of these crates. But we just don't have the range to try and cover these crates. That's the problem. We won't have as much capacity trying to cover down here later on, but... Having the second crate early on in the game is really important at the moment. And uh, yeah, a better early game spot, but not as good when it comes to the later game. But if we can actually get to the later game, that's better than um, not being able to get there in the first place. Yeah, I shouldn't really talk exuberantly up while under a cold at the moment. It's rather annoying just to try and do anything within your day-to-day -day basis, but at least it's not the other thing which spreads around the entire world during 2020 and is still prevalent today. You know what I'm talking about? And no, it's not a green balloon. Although it may as well be, since that's safer than you know what. Uh, yes! just about sniped that that's exactly what i wanted <laughs> uh i love the guided magic that came in clutch there not just for being able to see through these craters but just just trying to be able to do this in general okay round 10 sorted each of our bolts now has more power behind them as in like the amount of damage that they can do Oh crap, a single yellow balloon. Isn't that just a load of fun game? <laughs> uh, if you've been a viewer on this channel for a while, you know that I am a big fan of dying to yellow balloons since I died to them so often. Also on this round, we should be able to put down our balloon incineration. We'll put you on this, uh, you know, we'll put you on this crater since you're going to cause craters anyways to the balloons. And we need to rush a signal flow as soon as possible so that we have some means to be able to deal with camo balloons. Because I do think that water of <clears throat> sorry, water fire is gonna be better for this map than um additional range and pierce with the bolts. And there goes round 15. So yeah, sorry for the cough there. Shattering shells now online, but the only thing we've got to be weary of is the <laughs> Oh gosh, put you over here, please. You just had to miss, didn't you? So yeah, put the uh, the mortar over here just because of our beloved. Uh, oh gosh, I, again with this. With the wizards on strong, hopefully they'll be able to deal with the black balloon so that my mortar, my mortar so I can actually do something. Round twenty-one is the most difficult aspect of this game now done and dusted no because round 40 is also going to be an issue because we cannot afford neither um 
what would you call it? Neither arcane, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, arcane spike or shattering shells for round 40. Even if we sacrifice certain upgrades not being put into place uh, during or throughout the game, sorry. I, I don't even know what I'm saying now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and purple balloons somehow being pierce capped when it comes to a mortar, which is really odd. Zebra balloons, no worries. Okay, we're up to. Shall we go? No, we'll go with Arcane Mastery next. We're definitely going to need Balloon Buster and, well, basically our tier 3 upgrades are with the tier 2s of the Chosen Cross Path in this case. So then we have just about enough power to try and get through the first Moab round, which is. Definitely something. Okay, Arcane Mastery. And we put Wall of Fire over here now so that we can actually affect this first circle with the Wall of Fire. Pretty neat. Especially with all of these zebras. Camo reds, camo yellows, not a problem. Signal Flare deals with the camo status issue. So we're going to get Arcane Spike. And actually, we're going to go Archmage first before we're actually going to get Shattering Shells. Just because we really need that power. It's mainly good against. Moabs. Decent against ceramics, but really suffers against a huge wave of ceramics. So, I'm looking at you round 76 and 78. Definitely need for shattering shells as some sort of um, support. Although you are more military than support, but you get what I mean. This is where the first attempt spot would have been much better, just so that water fire can hit within this first crate a bit sooner. But it's just a matter of trying to actually get through the first few rounds anyway. So this is the worst spot, but it's a well, it's a spot that actually works because of the recovery of the second crate over there. Okay, okay, okay. We've got ourselves round 40 up and coming. We need to you over there we're going to move the wall of fire now to the second crater uh, and then we're going to move the wall of fire over here so that you can do some work over there yeah it's going to take a little bit of my green here and there to try and get down pink oh there's a zebra bloom anyway so that wouldn't have mattered If you die to let's say a bunch of ceramics that means you've got a lot more work to do but honestly something like that is just really really intimidating and that wraps that up i didn't need to move a water fire over to near the third crater just because of what happened there but i generally did think that you need it in a spot where it's able to kind of cover the balloons if they're going to be in a future part of the map anyway it's just because by the time that the usefulness of that wall of fire is done in its previous spot, it may not be useful anymore, especially against a single target. Rainbow balloons, decamified and done and dusted. Yeah, this is where both the wall of fire and also the mortar here is really useful. Did you know that the moon is the largest satellite to orbit Earth? It's considered a natural satellite, not one of those usual satellites which are made by man, no. A satellite is anything that orbits around the Earth, or orbits around any planet, really. So, you can think of the other moons across the planets and their po portion of the solar system. And um, they are also satellites, because they orbit around that particular planet. Ganymede is the largest moon of the solar system. Larger than Mercury which is a planet. I do feel bad for Pluto by being demoted from a planet to a dwarf planet. Like that's poor Pluto being demoted and all that. I don't know. I like to think that Pluto is part of the solar system. I'm going off on one of my little tangents here, but I love space and all of its bodies which are encompassing the solar system. They do say that if Jupiter doesn't exist, we will be much more prone to meteors and asteroids. Jupiter is this like single body, which in a lot of cases protects planet Earth from like, like meteors and asteroids, which is really, really bizarre, but also really, really cool. Yeah, after you get Arcane Spike, Moabs suffer a lot of damage, which is why really, 
You don't really have to worry about these next few rounds when you do have the arcane mage. Just as long so arcane spike. This is arcane mage. That's like the point between the, <laughs> uh, the arc mage and the mage's perfectors. Also, when we do get to arc mage, we don't have to worry about the signal flare being the only thing to the camera five balloons, since this is essentially a five three three wizard. And the bottom three means Shimmer, which essentially means the Camify Balloons, and it acquires Dragon's Breath as well. I just wish it was a more powerful form of Dragon's Breath than the actual Dragon's Breath to get free, since it's a tier 5 tower! Or maybe I'm reading into it too much, and it actually is an incredibly powerful Dragon's Breath, in which the Archmage projects. But I do love its water fire, though. That is the main selling point for me of the uh, middle cross path on the bottom one. More range and has access to that wonderful water fire upgrade for the early rounds. For only 865 for certain maps, it really is the damage dealer of the tower. Oh, great purple balloons. Just my absolute favorite. And do you know that sometimes on round 95, your balloon incineration can get pierce capped by the purple balloons. Really bizarre, isn't it? Like, honestly, you think the mortar is one of those towers where you would not expect to get pierce caps, but yet it does. I mean, obviously it does have a pierce cap, but in-game application, you just don't expect it to have that sort of thing going for it. Okay, we do need the shattering shells at some point, just to make work for the Archmage a little bit easier when it comes to the fortify balloons, just because of the fact that, well, when they're trundled down to BFBs and Moabs, we can remove a fortified property off of said balloons. Including ceramics, which is a big deal. Including leads, but they would die anyways. Honestly surprised my Elite Lich video on gear didn't receive that much backlash from people. Because honestly, I didn't really go into it with a optimistic mindset. Just because I knew it was going to be an incredibly stressful time. And uh, a lot of people seem to understand that, which I'm incredibly grateful for, because it's not a scenario which I imagine a lot of people will find fun, easier than, let's say, Elite Lich on uh, logs. And um, probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but it was probably easier than when the Lich Souls um, ramped up its HP during uh, the free play round. So. Let's say on tier 4 and tier 5, there was a certain point when the Master Builder Paragon was released. Was it before that? I'm actually honestly thinking it was beforehand, actually, but where um, the Lich Soul's HP would scale with free play. So you'd be on tier 5 Elite Lich, and the HP of it would just be incredibly absurd. Doesn't matter what kind of firepower you throw at it, it's just going to absorb so much damage. And uh, honestly, yeah, I found that to be more bearable than um, Elite Lich on Gears, just because of the map. The map itself is the restriction. Oh yeah, and also Normal had zero Paragons as its limit, so um, yeah, good luck with that. Ninja Kiwi really, sometimes I feel like they just really dislike their fan base, just because they love to throw us a curveball as to like what kind of scenarios like to give to us in the, at a certain point. Once we get Balloon Incineration, I think things will be fine until round 95, honestly, I think will be the next chance around after we acquire the Balloon Incineration. Uh, low 80s could be a little bit challenging, like we might have to move around the Wall of Fire just so that we're able to deal with the Ceramics, because Super Ceramics can kind of ignore your Wall of Fire, even when you do have the Arc made, so perhaps putting the Wall of Fire in the center of the second crate here might be very, very helpful for our endeavors. 78, a huge bunch of Ceramics, no problem whatsoever. On 63, the Shattering Shells can actually um, ignite all of each wave of uh, ceramics that come about on that round. Like, I think it just has enough pierce in order to actually ignite all of the ceramics, which makes every single wave of ceramics on that round incredibly easy. Hmm. Let's have a look at this round. Oh my god, these purples. 
I swear to goodness sakes we were pier scouts bear because of the purples. Round 79. <laughs> we grow rainbows, you don't get a chance. We have the firepower and we de regrow you. Fortified BFBs, where do you stand in all this? Wait, where did your fortify layer go? <laughs> That's one of the best things about like the bottom path mortar is that it is a viable tower for the ultra late game scenarios because once they do go down to a BFB or a Moab or if you have that paint stripper monkey knowledge point then also DTs as well you're able to remove a fortified property off of um, a lot of different kind of balloons not ZMGs or bads though that's the only downside hoping now that one day whenever the um, the mortar paragon would ever release it has an ability where it's just able to strip the fortified property off of every single balloon on screen but it's like it's a ability that only activates once around just because of how powerful it is but it also ignites all of the balloons on the screen as well like it just summons the entire field in hellfire <laughs> like if it's a giant like if it's just a bunch of meteors that hits the entire map or something and that is the ability of the mortar paragon now we have two wall of fires although i do think this wall of fire is a bit more powerful than this wall of fire just saying it out loud this is a tier 5 upgrade and this is a tier 2 upgrade i don't think it's going to be a, a debate as to which one's better okay round 85 two zomgs in this scenario yeah and sometimes it's better to try and divide and conquer otherwise you may get pierce capped well i think in update 43 i think it was the uh the top cross path with the balloon incineration has received a damage buff and a pierce buff to the wall of fire itself so that's a pretty good reason as to why you should pursue that although i think in a lot of other scenarios it's still more favorable to go with the faster reload so that you're able to fire more walls of fire out able to input more damage but um yeah within the first hundred rounds or so i think that additional pierce and coverage of water fire itself taking in a two tower gym scenario is very worthwhile bfbs go down to moabs and ddts not an issue both of these are excellent candidates to take out ddts i'm not worried about ddts whatsoever one of the few scenarios actually where i don't feel that dts are actually a threat perhaps round 99 might be an issue but that is round 99 scenario not round 92 scenario but you over here just so you can de fortify some of these bfbs and ddts <laughs> oh goodness sakes we just absolutely melt them fire is one of the only ways to deal damage against these behemoths those fast slick behemoths that sometimes you just cannot damage with the upgrades in which you have Ooh, are we gonna get pierce capped here let's put the wall of fire over here just in case we may need another wall of fire at some point and that's that okay yeah as i said pierce capped that's not very nice so what am i thinking of here i'm gonna put you on strong actually so that hopefully you can try and target lead so that then the only thing you've got to worry about is removing the purple layer off of all of you no that again it's always just that one isn't it fascinating Hopefully the Archimage can provide some early coverage. There we go. That's exactly what we needed. Who would have thought that <laughs> Moon Landing is one of the most optimal maps for the Balloon Incineration or for any mortar for that matter, honestly. It just creates a perfect environment where you could put a, sorry, you could have a wall of fire set up and literally the, the same balloon would uh, be within the area of its radius so much time. I know that didn't grammatically make any sense. I've got a cold, okay? Please forgive me. <laughs> ah, pierce capped! Okay, we're gonna move a wall of fire over to the second crate over here while some of them are damaged. And we're not going to get pierce capped. Excellent. So, that could be a similar strategy for round 98, actually. So, incinerate some of the ZMGs down to BFBs. 
and then from there you're not going to be overwhelmingly pierced camped by all of the balloons in which you have to deal with simultaneously and yeah the lack of um defortifying because of um well, the target is too big to defortify okay 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 i may need to think of something else of this particular round just because yeah that's the reason why perhaps if we just remove the fortified layer off of these um fortified bfds can the archmage handle the looming ceramics it can to an extent Yeah, switching the Archmage to first rather than being on strong actually did all of the work that I needed it to do. Brilliant. <laughs> Round 99, not an issue. DDTs. Yeah, this is done and dusted. Once you've done that Round 98 with this combination, it's pretty much done and dusted for you. It's pretty much game over for all of the balloons here. Including this really, really bad looking whale. Because it's a bad, it's a BAD. It's not bad design, it's a rather beautiful whale. Beautiful specimen of the ocean. I mean, balloon kind. It definitely is balloon kind. <laughs> uh, do we need to put a water fire over here now? I think we've... Okay, put you over here. And there we go. So yeah, a bit of a ropey start to this scenario. This <laughs> is a matter of where to actually put your your wizard monkey so it's able to do its job properly honestly it's all about finding the perfect spot in order to put your wizard monkey like there's probably like a debate where you could probably put it over here so that you're able to cover both the first crater and the, sorry the first crater and the third one actually that would be the first one if it's reversed but it's like i I couldn't find a spot over there that made it work for me, or perhaps I'm just not good enough at the game. So I thought, well, Water Fire can cover this crater, kind of, and it can definitely cover the second crater. Oh, and this can cover all the craters. <laughs> it's just the aim of the game with the mortar. <laughs> aim. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comment sections below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then be prepared for the next time Lich is on geared. It will be on 500% HP, 500% speed. And the most elite of the elite will still call it easy. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone, and take care of yourselves.